Ladies and gentlemen, Lang Golf Academy, welcome back. We have four amateurs on the screen and we are gonna look at some cause and effect, one or two for each individual, maybe help them out, but also help you understand true cause and effect is all individualized. There is no one swing theory style method that works for everybody. We are all unique. Thank you for those that are following us and thank you for those who support this channel. If you do wanna support this channel a little bit further, other than a like, share, subscribe, comment, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. It is 99 cents every month and this money goes straight to the kids in the Hillhood Foundation. But enough of that hogwash. Let's go help these amateurs out and also help you understand cause and effect. All right, welcome back Lion Golf Academy members and guests and we have our first amateur on the screen. Now remember these things, we're gonna try and do a one take Drake without having to get some issues that I had the other day with my lines disappearing and whatnot. That's user error, but you know, I'm blaming the computer on that one. Today we're gonna pick out a few things in everybody's swing and I want you to realize how different everybody is and nobody can really fall into a certain category. We are just limited by our body motion and our mechanics and also our God given and talent which is a lot of hand-eye coordination so we can see our first amateur here we see a lot of lower body thrusting we see a lot of manipulation with the arms and hands that impact just because of posture loss but what's a couple things that we learned from last week's video is about setup proper setup making sure that centeredness is connected with you and then you can rotate around that centeredness so let's just start from the beginning and pause it at the beginning and look at some setup lines we're not going to go crazy today but we're going to draw some basic lines here so we're going to the usual barney purple and again Again, we got to do the but that's not Barney purple let's redo that one there's Barney purple okay so we're gonna do the lower plane line upper plane line just to see what's going on the big one here is the spine angle line and then also from center of the heel straight up to the sky so we can see what do we start to see a little bit of forward bend a little bit of toe receiving a lot of this weight so if you look at the centeredness of his setup you can see the centeredness is way ahead of that hip joint now what we can tell from this is look at impact do we see look at the right hip Hip. so the right hip is going to try and catch up to that centeredness right there so a lot of posture loss not necessarily because of weight distribution issues but weight distribution issues are caused by an incorrect setup so if this was my student the first thing i'd do is get him to be a little bit more supporting his hips so some issues we might pull those feet slightly close but maybe sit back in the heels a little bit more see not so top heavy and we go straight to the top of the swing and see you get pretty good position here arms can get a little bit higher so they're not so stuck in between the two planes so if if you are watching this by any chance focus on getting the hands a little bit higher in that secondary plane line so the arms can drop down naturally as you rotate now remember you are very toe heavy because of the way you set up so it's going to prevent you from rotating and tilting correctly you know that first move down as you are now rotating but there's little tilt so from this position look at your right shoulder your right shoulder is going around your spine instead of underneath so this could be weight distribution issues and we can tell you are stuck on your right side look at that left toe spinning it's not receiving any weight so there's no distribution there's no drive of the hips so let me see if I can do this where it makes sense. I'm going to draw a face on. So we're going to draw, there's your spine angle, there's one leg, there's the other leg, here's your your feet. And forgive me for this elementary drawing, but hopefully you can guys get the idea. So that is a horrible drawing, but let's say that's your club. You want your hips, your first move is to get that left hip to drive towards the target, which in turn gets this right shoulder to tilt down, which will help you get those hands to down to that lower plane line a little bit quicker. And from there, you can rotate through. But look at this weight distribution loss. Your hands have to throw and look at this impact. Your posture is up in the sky and there's just no distribution. So you're kind of spinning out all over the place. Hope this helps you. Hope this helps you at home realize that setup is everything for all of us. The best in the world have to look at their setup first. The best in the world go through grip alignment, setup posture, and then if there's some issues, then they go to work on their full swing. So let's see who's next. Hope that helps you, by the way. Let's see who's next. All right, next up, first of all, I love those skin shoes. Those are awesome. They're so comfortable. I play golf in skin shoes all the time, and it really makes me feel connected to the ground. But I do come home with some grass rash. I'm not sure why. So we see a pretty good rotation here. Good stability. It sees tiny bit of weight distribution issues. I do see a lot of picking with the hands, not a lot of driving down with the right shoulder, not a lot of compression going on here. So let's just take a look at what I see can help you with this compression. And let's go, first of all, let's check where that ball position is in relation to your shoulder tilt so we're going to draw an exactly about 15 yards let's do difference. this barney purple again since we got that barney purple theme always here and right shoulder let's do 90 degrees that's fairly close to 90 so it's definitely way off your right shoulder we do have a lot of forward bend going on here and this is premature 
forward bend with a very strong grip so the, unless you are really gifted and getting your right shoulder to fall all the way down to hold off that release there's going to be some issues here through impact but let's take a look at what happens to you at impact we go to the top of the swing great rotational this looks very solid and right there okay so yeah you definitely start to yeah there's that impact so your hands have to still stay centered so you can't really you know what i'm going to recommend something for you so what we're going to do is we're going to move that ball position up forward okay so hear me out let's put the ball position right uh, there okay so move that ball position what is that one and a half two golf balls out and what this will do is it will now connect to your shoulder tilt and if you put your hands right through, you can see how much closer that will be connected to the center of your spine angle. Now, here's the key. You do a great job to the top of the swing. Once we get to the top of the swing here, weight, great weight load. Okay, now you can unload that weight correctly, but you get trapped because that ball position is essentially too far out of your center and you have to throw your hands. But let's take a look. I want you to get a visual image of this angle here. Okay. So this angle, I want you to try to carry this angle down and left. Okay, so if you can carry that angle down and left, what we're trying to do is, let me, let me do it the other way. So if you can imagine uh, this angle, okay, so whatever your right knee is connected to your left hip, you're trying to carry this exact same angle left of the golf ball before you strike it. Because what this is doing is it's helping your hands move down into the golf ball because that's the way they're moving based on your position here now let's say you start to write yourself which you kind of do so as we get down to impact right there we can see that now this angle is more up and down and then as you get down to impact it's starting to stand up to create some room for your hand so in essence what we try to do is compress the ball so we need to try and get some angles so some of my students when i get to the top of the swing i, I grab their shoulders right where they are and i just shift them left from this position i don't even turn them i don't do anything so i'm taking the whole upper body and shifting it left from here so that could be your first move is feel your whole body shifting your knee your hips your knees everything is going left to that target you're carrying down either this angle or this angle whichever angle you want to see but you're carrying down that little tp of power let's call it the tp of strength you're going to move that tp of strength over to the left side and in essence this x is going to be ahead of your golf ball when you do that Okay, so let's say we move it over, and you are now leaning more like this. Okay, that's what we're trying to envision as you take that golf ball down. Now, there's your centeredness. That's ahead of the golf ball, which is what we want. Because now, when it's ahead of the golf ball, your hands and your hand path will be swinging down before you hit the golf ball. So this is how you're going to get some compression. So I hope that's a little bit easier for you to understand that I did explain it. I might have lost you a little bit there, but if I did, leave, some, leave a comment down there. Let me know, and I'll help you out. But hope that helps you. But what this will help you do is when you get down to impact, you can see your X is still where it was. It needs to be a little bit left. So if we draw, let's, let's do this in red. So here's your center. It's still right there. Your center needs to be a little bit left. So just carry that angle, lean left, and then turn. And boom, you'll all of a sudden want to get that flip, and you can generate some extreme power by doing that slight little move, and that is weight distribution. Hope that helps you. Let's see who's next. Okay, so this one is a very unique swing, but man, does this work? Because it is very inside, very flat, but there is some really good hand action and make it work this is a very touchy touchy shop subject this is a very touchy subject to try and fix but let's just take a look at all the compensatory motions we are doing here here is your spine angle and i don't think this caught it the, there it goes caught at the beginning so let's put the plane line let's put the upper plane line so it's a very steep setup of center of the heels boom congratulations hey this works so good job you can get some weight distribution that's probably why you have such a really good body motion that can make this work top of the swing you take this club behind you and then we get it pretty flat so ideally if you were looking at your swing and you were a robot and i plugged this into you your left arm would be up here that is the robotic version now humans we have our tendencies and that's your tendency but you can see the club 
even though it is crossing the line it is not necessarily going too far back because it's not falling back and pointing down to the ground hands seem relatively out in front it's kind of hard to tell from this let's put a little line there to see any changes now let's look at this as you come on down through so you definitely get some turn you're crunching an eye into it and you're starting to lose a little bit of posture but look at those hands those hands catch on the, the lower plane line and then you find a way to square up the club face it is very shallow you probably hit the ball somewhat low and left when you do this but your hands release nicely and as we come on in we can see that it might appear like you're losing some posture here but i think this is just because you're going further left away from the camera sometimes the camera does this um, all in all this is a very very hard swing to try and throw out some theories out there and some things to work on because you obviously hit that ball pretty well as we can see however I wouldn't necessarily change much yet because your setup looks good, your compensatory motions look good. What you need to do, here's my recommendation for you, is go out and hit 20 pitching wedges and keep track of how many were good. If they were good, write a three. If they were medium, write a two. If they were horrible, write a one. And then of those, you need to see how many went right and how many went left. And then do 29 irons, 28 irons, 27, and work your way through the bag. Do 20 of each. Now, obviously, this might take a few range sessions, but you have to be disciplined. And what you need to do is look at your percentages and say, okay, how much am I missing left with this club? How much am I missing right with this club? How many feel good? How many feel eh -eh? How many feel horrible? And then you can start to decide, okay, is this really worth me reinvesting into golf swing changes? Because it is not necessary. You seem like you have been doing this for quite some time, and your swing is so ingrained, it might take take a lot of work to ungrain it and somebody that can pay attention to do it the correct way and if you go down this venture by yourself it's going to be very frustrating you need professional assistance most of us do but you definitely do anybody that is geared and is being formed with the golf swing needs some assistance so i know this isn't what you want to hear but for those guys and girls watching this that you do have a swing that's so ingrained in you it is hard to do things by yourself, specifically if you're not quite sure of what causes what. I see a lot of great manipulation, uh, but you know what? I want to do a full swing analysis on you. Can you send me the face on and on the line? I really want to break this swing down for you to show you how you make things work, and uh, I look forward to seeing that. So link is in the description below. Send me that stuff. I'll take care of you. Hope that helps you. Let's see who is the last one. Ready? Okay, last one's on the screen. I haven't seen this one yet. Let's take a look. All right, let's just go back and forth. Okay, wow. Um, yes, we've all been there before, so don't worry about it. I, I've done that many times. This is a great shot if you are downwind and big time downhill. Let that wind take that ball. I know it probably went about 30 yards, but let's take a look at what's going on here. Right away, we see an immense shoulder dip. You know, you don't want to get those hands too high with that dip because you have to reroute and you see yourself coming up, hands getting a little bit higher than they started. It's a lot of manipulation here, but I'm going to tell you, good thing though because this you can solve with a couple simple changes here it's not necessarily a swing change remember your body is trying to do a golf swing with what you give it and foundation is the number one thing so let's see if we can catch this right there perfect so barney purple we're gonna put that up there barney purple lower line and we're just going all barney purple today i'm going to confuse everybody with these barney purples but you know what that's just how it goes sometimes so center of the right right where the arches are look at how much of that weighting is so far forward so again your center and i'm seeing a lot of this lately is way too far forward so you're out on your toes to make this swing work now when you're out on your toes typically what happens is if you are not used to this if you're not used to fighting that your whole body will tip down towards your toes and what do we see your whole body's tipping down towards your toes now you're stuck so here's a good upper body excuse me here's a good upper plane line you reach that perfectly club is a little bit shut to your left forearm it's not quite set correctly you can see the arms are pulling back so obviously there's some other issues there but with this extreme tilting now you have to tilt a lot more under to strike that golf ball correctly and let's just pull up some numbers here to see what your tilting would need to be so there's your left shoulder tilt right now it is 36 degrees so in order to hit this very well put it this way you need about 15 to 20 degrees at this position so you're about 15 degrees too much so if you need in order to hit this very well you need to be 50 degrees of impact and that's a lot of tilting let's see what you get to at impact so you actually go the other way so as we strike just past impact we are 
there. So you do get a little bit more tilting, which is okay, but you can see you struck the ground. So when you go, when you're tilting down and you tilt down more, your hands get down much sooner. So you could have learned to pull the hands up and change the hand pass so you don't hit the ground back over here. So there is a lot of manipulation here. You can probably hit the ball decently sometimes, but I fear that this is probably a more common miss for you. A lot of uh, posture loss. You can see the body. Here we go with these lines again. They're starting to break down. So if all of a sudden I stop recording, you know why I got frustrated and stopped it. But you can see that there's a lot of crash into the golf ball, standing up. But again, you've got to get your setup correctly. So let's back it up. Let's give you some new setup guidance here. So let's redraw this. So let me put where I want your legs to be. And then your hips. So that would be the center of your hip. And then your upper body needs to be taller. Okay, much taller. Let the arms just relax. Now from here, your head's obviously going to be a little bit taller. That's that's some Roblox for you. Okay, now when they're taller, now your shoulders can work around that a lot easier. They don't have to get so tilty, uh, but you can only do that when your weighting is corrected. So you can only tilt around a steady spine, but if your spine is dipping forward because your toes are so weighted on the front, either really good athletes fight that or brand new athletes have a tough time fighting it. So hope that helps you stand a little bit taller. Get some height, it's okay. Remember, you're not swinging down with the driver. We are swinging up, it's on a T. So why are you trying to dig it out of the dirt? Stand taller, hang back, swing up. Hope that helps you. Let me know in the comments below. Hope that helps you, ladies and gentlemen, at home. And if you do like this, hit that like, share, subscribe. It really helps us grow. And if you want to appear in one of these, send me a video of yourself. Link is in the description below. Thanks so much, Ferris and Greens.